Well, this normally isn't a good idea, but uh, it's a long walk into the store. There's a save a lot that uh, I need to get some bread and a couple of more things to eat. I normally never ever hide my gear, but I put some cardboard flaps over in case somebody pokes their head in, but the contrast is so dark, I don't think they'll notice because the camera's in the shade right now and my face is in the sun. And I, I can't see in there at all. But, yeah, I just don't feel like lugging that for nothing round trip. And plus these box cars, all of them, these are the ones I was telling you about yesterday that are like overflow. And check out how long they've been here. Yep, years. So these ain't going nowhere. That ain't what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is going into town and somebody noticing me. A couple of people blew their horns at me walking to the little convenience store yesterday. And this time I actually posted the yesterday's video of Willard while I was still here. That's the first time I've ever posted a video right after I put it together in the same town. But I gotta walk up to save a lot and watch. I guarantee you my train will come while I'm gearless. That happens every time. A train will come when you ain't got your gear. There appears to only be one jump train a day, and I slept almost 11 hours last night. Yeah, check out what I found. You see this? This is rubber. It's matting. And what an insulator. Oh, my God. It's made out of recycled rubber pressed. And I'm not far from my boxcar, and these make good insulators and good cushion too. They insert these between loads when they're loaded, and the companies that unload them are supposed to clean this crap out, but some of the companies don't. But this is what I'm excited about. I'm on my way to the store still to save a lot, and this is a perfect find, and I... I set some rocks on the, the tracks underneath so I'd know which boxcar it was on my way back. I'm going to grab them and take back to my boxcar. Yeah, look how long it's been since any trains rolled down through here. Okay, well, nothing's been on that rail. Stuff growing up in between it. it this is at least from uh, winter time. Nothing's been through here this year. Oh, I should have brought my machete just to walk down the track. Uh, I might have to cross back over. I'm getting all the little hitchhikers on me. Yeah, I'll cross over. I gotta have both hands though. You know. A lot of people ask me, ask me what I carry in my bucket. So I'll show you what what I actually do carry in it, because you might be surprised at what all I have. Well, when I sit out and get fresh supplies, I always get fresh fruit. Six or eight bananas. And... Mustard really don't go bad. And then I got some grapes. Grapes are real hardy. You can bang them around. And, and bananas, you just throw away the pills. And these, you always carry three or four of paper bags. In case you got to go to the bathroom and don't not nothing, nothing to go on. And I carry an emergency liter of water. 
these are real good Jumex. Got a couple of them. Peach and pear is my favorite. And always got a thing of peanut butter. There's my ham. Lunch meat. Lunch meat keeps a lot longer than people think. And my knife in case I gotta get out get it out quick. And then this military supply bag here has my blood pressure medicines in it. Uh, like a first aid kit stuff, burn ointment, itch relief cream, nasal spray, eye drops, and my prescription glasses for when I need them, and an extra battery charger, battery bank, but you always put that meat kind of in the center because the heat takes longer to get to it, especially on a cool morning. When it's been cool out. But, yeah, the grapes are unbelievable. It, you get real tired, you sit down and eat a couple of handfuls of grapes. Ten minutes later, you're ready to start walking again. But, yeah, I'm still, still waiting. My train will come from the east, heading west. On those first two lines over there oh, right about the top of my finger and that's basically what all I carry oh and I have a, two cans of chili down there on the bottom too yep that's the box car I slept on last night I pulled the door to that that far because there's a few others that are open but uh, I didn't want it, want it to stand out if it was open anymore. It would be the first one you naturally look at. Uh, especially the same crew drives by here every day on the train. They would notice something like that, I would think. Yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention about the bucket. Well, not one, but you can drop it off a train with that rope. And nothing inside gets crushed. That way you can have good bread. Plus it converts into a to a seat. You can stand on it to get in the boxcar. You can empty it out and wash your laundry inside of it. You put a couple of big rocks about big as your fist. Two or three in with your clothes with soap. And you just shake the bucket. Shake it up in those rocks help agitate and beat them clothes clean but uh yeah i'm a bucket man i've always been and uh eric my friend bought me this for my birthday really nice and on the bottom it has a like a rubber ring on the bottom that keeps it from sliding and it keeps the stuff inside insulated and that's another thing if you've had a cold night that thing will keep cold inside during the day and it keeps bugs bugs stay out of your uh your food and stuff to get a little more life out of your food hey you, has anyone ever heard the expression riding the rods it i think got started back in the depression era hobo but you hear it uh, talked about a lot about riding the rods well what that was you really can't do it now unless you don't have anything with you look under the car here you see the rod that's one of the brake rods that runs from the air reservoir and the pulleys uh that's what they were talking about they would of course these newer cars you probably can't ride the rods unless you got a couple of belts to tie around you. But get on top of the ride, and you just ride, and you and you don't get seen. Uh, you'd you'd be hard pressed to do it on this this one. But cars were made back different back in the day. The rods were a little lower down. Now you get the 
idea of what they mean right in the rod. Yeah, here's an old car chop. This went on the track like this. It kept the train car from rolling any further. I've seen workers use a, a, a piece of railroad tie that you'll find little chunks of railroad tie everywhere they sit under the back wheel, but that's a, a rail chalk. And the wheel actually can roll up on here, but it there's no way it would go any further. Because once the wheel's on here with that weight, it ain't no way it's going to push this back but i've never seen them just left out here like this but ever since they started closing hump yards and switch yards uh remember me telling you about uh ground air well this is what i was talking about if you want if you wander down in the yard and you're trying to figure out which row of cars you'll be going out which cut's going to be going out? You look for one of these hoses. What it is, it's it's air that's piped through this, and it goes through a hose and down into the ground. See, this one's down in the ground. Then there's a main metal pipe that runs all the way back to the shop to an air compressor. So after they after they make up the cut of cars that's going to be going out, they'll take this, see where the glad hands are on the end, and they'll hook it to that last air hose on the last car, only on the last car, where that one's pipe, where that hose is hooked, this ground air will be hooked to that last car, and then they open the angle cock and let air go through all the cars and on the last car on the other side the angle cock will be turned shut so the air can't get out down there and they build up all them tanks put air in all the tanks the reservoir tank in each one of the cars and that's how you know that car that whole rack of cars going out and it's usually the end that ground air on is the direction you'll be going They'll back the engines in, and right before the engines hook up, what he'll do, he'll take that ground air hose off. It'll be on the last car like this. So when you walk up in the yard and there ain't nobody around, just look for that ground air hose hooked on the end car. And that's where the locomotives are going to butt into. So you go that way if the ground air is on the end. But since they closed all these yards, they just let them lie to waste. Just going to waste. But that's what I mean when you hear me talk about ground air.